Okay, in this section, we're going to have a look at question three. Question three reads, learners have investigated the melting and boiling points of six substances A to F. Okay, we don't know them. We don't know their substances by name but they are anonymous at the moment but we have recorded their melting points and their boiling points in degrees celsius and they have been listed for us in the table 3.1 and what usually is the question for any section either physics or chemistry when there's a, um, a question on a specific topic they always ask you to define something here the question is define the term boiling point What's another question that they could have asked? They could have asked you to define the term melting point as well. Okay, so it's good that we just go through these past papers for you to see, familiarize, familiarize, sorry, okay, to expect certain questions that is often repeated. Okay, the Department of Physics, Physical Sciences doesn't reinvent the wheel. All right, neither does maths. We don't reinvent the wheel, we just stick and hammer the same things nine times out of ten and just hammer the same things okay so if you've practiced enough past papers you should be able to expect know what to expect for even future exams from about even next year this year next year and the following year okay because they don't change define the term boiling point okay now boiling point is a definition right so let's get that down together the term boiling point okay first of all we know that when a substance boils, it boils at a certain temperature. So that's what we start defining our defi uh, defining boiling point as. We know that it is the temperature at which, okay, and we can take water for example, because we know at 100 degrees Celsius we start seeing some water vapor. Okay, even bef even before 100 degrees Celsius, as we hit a little bit towards there. Okay, but water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, so it's the temperature at which vapor pressure of a liquid, okay, such as water, um, is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Uh, pressure, atmospheric pressure. Is that, yes, that's the right word. Okay. And another word for atmospheric pressure is external pressure. That is your definition for boiling point. Boiling point. Okay. Cool. 3.2 to 3.2.1. Right, let's just have a look -see. When it comes to any table with regards to physics, especially in this question, they say from the above investigation, write down the dependent variable. They could ask you to also write down the independent variable, okay? Or they could ask you to, um, and they'll give you a question such as an investigative question, okay? Which is similar to a hypothesis. Those of us who should know what a hypothesis is, an hypothesis, of course, is a statement, okay, saying how the investigation is going to go and proving whether that statement that you made at the beginning, before we even started the experiment or investigation, is either proven to be correct or proven to be null and void, otherwise known as incorrect. An investigative question is very similar to a hypothesis, okay? Very similar, only difference, investigative question is a question, hypothesis is a statement. Okay, there's no question mark attached to it. So looking at the table over here, okay, what is the dependent variable? Okay, when you're looking at a table, it's very easy to find the, de the um, dependent and independent variable. Okay, so with the table, and the trick is, and majority of the time, in fact, almost all um, of the time, okay, the um, I the dependent variable will usually be on the uh, last column of the table, and the independent will usually be in the um, first or second column of the table, okay, um, after the the name doesn't count of the substance, okay? But usually it'll be independent first before dependent, okay? Usually. 
Otherwise, if you say, okay, I don't want to rely too much on that, then you can just obviously look at your substances and how you would obviously graph it. Okay, so that doesn't apply to this table though, because all they did was they investigated a substance, a certain substance, looked at their melting point, and looked at their boiling point. That's all they did. Okay, so for your dependent variable for this investigation, the easiest one probably to denote would be boiling point. Boiling point would be the dependent variable. Okay, because that obviously is dependent on something. Boiling point is dependent on pressure on temperature, right? Because boiling point happens at a certain temperature. But it is also fair to make that same analogy for melting point. Because melting point also happens at a certain pressure. So melting point could also be a dependent variable. Because melting point is dependent on temperature. Right? Melting point for substance A is dependent on it being 3000 degrees Celsius. So either one would have been correct. All right, let's have a look here at uh, 3.2.2, an investigative question. Okay, an investigative question, this can obviously be and will differ from learner to learner. Okay, because there's more than one way to ask a question, correct? Um, so a good type of question would be, you've got substances, A to F, and you have their melting point, and you have their boiling point. So maybe we can check what is the relationship you can check what is the relationship between not just the melting points and the boiling points but between a change in temperature okay because we want to investigate how does a change in temperature looking at the relationship between a change in temperature and a boiling point or a melting point okay so how does a change in temperature affect these points of the different substances okay boiling points or melting point sorry not points that should just be melting point okay question 3.3 from the table or from the above table of results write down the letter A to F that represents the substances with or substance or substances which 3.3.1 is a gas at 25 degrees Celsius 3.2 is a liquid at 300 degrees Celsius 3.3.3 has the strongest forces of attraction between particles as well as give a reason for our answer of course and 3.3.4 has the weakest forces of attraction between particles and we need to provide a reason for that as well okay interesting okay so we want to know we want to find out from the table a to f okay we want to find out which substance is a liquid all right sorry not a liquid but a gas at 25 degrees Celsius the answer for 3.3.1 is substance D all right now question arises now is uh, why uh, I'll tell you okay so we can see there that it has a melting point substance D has a melting point of negative 5 degrees Celsius remember all these temperatures are recorded in Celsius and not Kelvin. All right. Then we see it has a boiling point of 15 degrees Celsius. So if it has a boiling point of 15 degrees Celsius, and they're asking, is a gas at 25 degrees Celsius? Well, substance D one is the closest within that range. Everything else is <laughs> a little bit higher, like way higher. All right. I think the second lowest there. Um, that, well, that's. Well, geez, none of them are actually pretty close. They're all, all pretty far, you know, to the left and to the right of the number line. Okay, so substance D is definitely correct there because it has a boiling point of 15 and definitely by 25 degrees Celsius, uh, this thing is a gas. Okay, so this was 3.3.1, substance D. 
right, let's have a look at 3.3.2. Uh, 3.3.2 wants to know which substance is a liquid at 300 degrees Celsius. So it's a liquid at 300, look at the melting points and look at the boiling points guys, and determine which substance would be a liquid at 300 degrees Celsius, because when it hits boiling point it's transitioning from liquid to a gas, when it's at melting point that's when it's at its coolest. I say substance B as well. Substance B is indeed correct, alright, substance B is indeed correct, because substance B has a melting point of 200 has a boiling point of 500, so it definitely looks like a liquid at 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, so 3.3.2, substance B. And all we did there was we just thought a bit logically. Okay, we didn't even overanalyze it. We just thought a bit logically. 3.3.3, which substance has, or substances, has the strongest forces of attraction between particles? And give a reason for your answer. 3.3. Point three. The substance that has the strongest forces of attraction between its particles is substance A, right? And the reason that we're going to give, okay, is because substance A has the highest melting point, right? Or we can say has the highest boiling point. Okay, substance A. Okay, that definitely has the strongest force of attraction because if a substance's or if a substance boiling point, let's just talk about boiling point, is quite high, it usually means that there's a lot of energy that is needed to break those particles, all right, or to break those forces up. Same thing with melting point. The same thing is uh, to now um, lots of energy is going to go into obviously cooling this uh, substance down, bringing this, bringing the substance back together, uh, or to the melting point. But uh, it's easier to explain, obviously, for boiling point, because boiling point obviously needs taking them apart. Okay, so substance A, it has the highest melting point, or the highest um, boiling point. Let that be a prerequisite to think about the answer for 3.3.4 which states that has which substance or substances has the weakest forces of attraction between the particles so 3.3.4 that option there sorry guys that option there was option E and I'm just gonna go with either one of these is because it has the lowest uh, boiling point it has the lowest boiling point, okay? Or we can also say the lowest melting point is also okay. And we want to 3.4 or 3.4.1. We're almost out of this question. It says that grade 10 learners are investigating the effect of increasing temperature on three different substances, A, B, and C. We're gonna study the diagrams of the substances below and answer the following questions, okay? So it looks like they are representing different phases of matter for the different substances. 3.4.1 says rearrange the diagrams according to the increasing, the increasing average kinetic energy of the substances. Okay, the increasing, okay? So from uh, ascending order, lowest to highest. So if we look here, that looks like they're obviously investigating uh, phases of matter. Um, so we can see that B looks like it's representing the solid phase. So the particles are not really moving much in B. All right. C that looks like they have a bit more uh, room to move, and A they got the most room to move. Okay, or they're very vibrant, very vibey. All right. Um, very almost I would use the word energetic so there's lots more there's more kinetic energy here because they're able to move very fast so 3.4.1 the answer should be rearranged as B which looks like it is our solid phase C which looks like it is our liquid phase and A which looks like it is our gas phase B C A 
And by doing that, I've actually just answered 3.4.2, which asked us which phase is substance C. At which phase is substance C? And I mentioned it in my answer here. It is the liquid phase. Okay, okay we'll see why. Because B, if it looks like it's solid, particles are packed quite tightly together. A is definitely, there's more space in between the particles, must be gas, and C. Particles are not too tight, but also not too far apart. They have a bit more room to move. They take on a different shape, but not as rigid as B, as they are in B. So C must be the liquid phase. And that ends off question three for this paper.